Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Carrie and today I am doing the end of the year book tag. Quick note, I did not post on Wednesday and I do apologize about that. Because I work for the government we have Monday off for Veterans Day and honestly I don't know who else gets that off because I get confused with holidays. Anyway, I got Monday off which was amazing and because of that by the time I realized that it was Wednesday, it was Thursday. And at that point I just decided that I would say screw it and post on Sunday. So wasn't intentional, it was just my timelines getting completely batty. But beyond that, I am back and today I am doing the end of the year book tag. There are six questions to this tag and if I can get back up to the beginning, there we go. Uh, I have answers for most of them, so let's get into it. The first question is, are there any books you need to finish this year that you've already started? I mean, there's several that I'm currently in the middle of, but the most important and most intimidating one is La Sombra del Viento by Carlos Ruiz Zafón. This one I've been reading since June, I think. And by reading, I mean I read 10 pages and then I got busy with work and I didn't have the mental energy to continue trying to read something in my second language. And then after a month went by, I had other books and I just got really scared to pick it up again because it takes a lot more time and energy to read something that is not in your native language. However, I am determined that this will not carry over into 2020. I don't care if that means I have to stay up an entire night to read it come December 31st, but this will be done by the end of 2019. If you don't know what this is about, the English translation is The Shadow of the Wind, and it's about a boy in the 1940s, 1945, in Spain, and he finds this library of forgotten books, and we go from there. I'm excited to read it, I really like the premise, and there has definitely been part of me that's been tempted to pick it up in English because I know that's be that would be easier, but the point of buying this book and then picking it up in Spanish was to work on my Spanish so that it doesn't completely go to pot. That hasn't been working for me well, obviously, since I haven't read it in five months, but like I said, I am hell-bent on getting this done before the end of 2019. So. If I don't have this done by the end of December, you have permission and my blessing and my begging you to please yell at me to finish this book. Also at the end of November, if I don't say I've made any progress with it, please call me out. Question number two is do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? No. No, I do not. I don't really do seasonal reads. Um, I've tried to think back over the last couple of years. But honestly, there hasn't been a particular genre or a particular anything that I read during one season or another. Sometimes I pick up a book that seems to fit the season. For example, this month I'm reading The Splendor Before the Dark by Margaret George. And that one's a little bit darker because it's about the brutality of Nero's reign, basically. But it wasn't an intentional this is dark and autumnal, it was a, ooh, I've been saying I want to read this for a couple of months, so we're gonna fit it in. But I don't really do seasonal reads, so no, I do not have a transition book. Number three, is there a new release you're still waiting on? Yes. There, as of the date of posting this, there are three. The first one is coming out on Tuesday and it's Blood Air by Amelie Zong? That sounds right. It's Blood Air, and I, it'll show up in my November haul. Um, but I'm super excited about this one. It was supposed to come out in July and then got pushed back. But very excited about that one. The other one is Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi, which is the second in the Children of Blood and Bone series. That one comes out in December. And then the third one is the completion of the trilogy, which is over here. Don't remember the name of the third one. But the name of the first one is The Shadow of What Was Lost and then An Echo of Things to Come by James Islington. It's an Australian series and like most series I buy, apparently, I bought the second one without realizing it was the second one and then I had to go back and buy the first one and I got hooked. But that one also comes out in early December. So uh, yes, there are definitely series or books that I'm anticipating. Number four is what are three books that you want to read before the end of the year? The first one is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I do not actually own this book, surprisingly, but to be fair, I only just read Oliver Twist this year as well. 
so owning Dickens isn't something that's really been a goal of mine until this last year when I finally read something of his and decided that it's not half bad so I would like to continue reading other stuff. Also I do enjoy Christmas Carol uh, retellings or plays so I would like to actually read the source material and I figured why not this year but I will be getting it from my library. The second book is Crucible edited by Mercedes Lackey. This is a collection of short stories by her and I bought this one on the recommendation of one of the artists at the Renaissance Festival. We had a whole conversation. So she said that her favorite books by Mercedes Lackey are some of the short stories. I decided that since I also love Mercedes Lackey, it seemed like a good time to buy the short stories, which I've always been kind of hesitant about because short stories and I have a hit and miss relationship. But if I was recommended short stories, I will pick it up. So I would like to get through this because I don't think it'll take me that long. And also I've really been missing some Mercedes Lackey in my life. And then the third one shouldn't really surprise anybody on its subject matter. And that is Elizabeth and Her Circle by Susan Duran. This book I have had on my shelf since it was published because I think I got it within, yeah, uh, within a year of it being published because I got it in the hardcover and it wasn't out in anything yet. But that is 2015, by the way. I've had this for four years. Almost five, I guess. I really want to read it. I was super excited when it came out. It's all about Elizabeth and the people closest to her. So Robin Dudley, Cecil, Lord Burley, who are one and the same, by the way. All those people who were vital to her reign and to the image of herself that she posed. I just haven't read it yet. And I'm absolutely failing on my goal of this year to read something about Elizabeth or her time period every month. So I should maybe at least read one more this year and I would like it to be this one. Number five is, is there a book that you think could shock you and become a favorite? No, no there is not. The books that I own are all books that I think I will either highly enjoy or absolutely love. So none of the books that I read are going to shock me and become a new favorite. Don't get me wrong, some of them will become new favorites. It's just that none of them are going to shock me by doing it. I know what I like, I'm good at picking out what I like, and this is part of the problem with my book buying addiction. Which is, yeah, whole other story, but basically, no. I'm not gonna be shocked if I like any of these books. A shocker would be if I disliked any of these books. That would also be really sad. I don't like it when I dislike a book. It's heartbreaking. And number six is, have you already made reading plans for 2020? Duh. I would not be sitting here in front of three bookshelves talking about books I want to read if I had not already made plans for 2020. I have multiple books already pre-ordered. I am going on a not strictly book buying ban, but a limitation on my book buying because I really, I have got to pull back. I have so many unread books on my TBR and I'm not one of the people who wants to get down to a zero TBR or even a 50 TBR because that's just unrealistic for me but I would like to get it down from like 500 books that it currently is because that just seems insane and stressful even though I love it and I just I need to get better so yes I would like to start reading one book basically per genre or per bookshelf essentially next year per month. So that would be one nonfiction, one classic, one historical fiction from adult, one historical fiction in YA, one adult fantasy, one YA fantasy, one mystery, and one sci-fi. Which is nine books a month. So that could be an interesting goal because this year I have not been doing overly well on the whole reading more than five books a month thing. Check out past TBR videos for this year because none of them have gone well. But Suffice to say, again, yes I have plans for next year. We will see if any of them come to fruition. Because this whole year-long planning thing for books doesn't seem to go well for me. But that'll come at the end of the year when I actually go back and see what I wanted to accomplish this year and I tell you that I basically didn't accomplish any of it. Moving on, that's the end of the year book tag with a fair bit of rambling. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.